You have tuned in to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Systems for Action Research Program in our regularly recurring Research in Progress webinar series. So thanks so much for joining us. If you are new to Systems for Action, we are a national research program funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Um, and our mission is to study ways of better connecting medical care, public health, and social service systems in ways that can advance the causes of uh, health improvement and, and particularly health, health equity. Uh, we fund research studies all around the country, um, testing a whole variety of innovative ways of helping medical, social, and public health systems work better together um, and to align their efforts toward the goals of advancing health, health equity. Um, and we come to you about twice a month through this webinar series, feature one of our uh, funded research projects um, to give give our research teams a chance to let you know what they're up to, uh, let you know what they are learning, um, and um, um, and also have a time for uh, for audience members to ask questions as uh, as well. Um, these are all um, these are projects that are are definitely in progress, and um, and so you'll hear from research studies at various stages of development and, and implementation uh, through uh, through this webinar series. Um, and today. Uh, we're very fortunate to um, uh, be featuring a research team from the Coeur d'Alene tribe uh, up in Idaho, uh, describing their developmental research study around developing a tribal care coordination dashboard. Um, so um, I should say I'm, I'm Glenn Mays. I, am, I have the privilege of directing the Systems for Action Research Program, in the National Program Office, which is based here at University of Colorado School of Public Health, where I'm coming to you from. Uh, and I'm also joined today with uh, by um, one of our talented PhD students, Maggie Reed, who's going to um, help us uh, moderate the session, um, and particularly when we get to the Q&A session. Just a couple of housekeeping um, issues. Um, this webinar, like all our webinars, is being recorded today. And so if you miss anything, or if you've got colleagues who couldn't attend our live session today, we will be archi archiving a recording of the session on our website. It's just systemsforaction.org. Uh, um, and you can find the page that has um, our webinar series and our recordings. So the recordings are up there. The slides will be up there. Um, and if you registered for today's meeting, you also get an email confirming you know, that, that link to the archives as well. Uh, we've got a pretty large group with us today. Um, so every, all, the, all the participants, everybody who's not a speaker on this webinar, you will be muted throughout uh, the webinar series, but you can still pose questions um, by clicking on the Q&A button that you should see down at the bottom of your screen. If you click on that button, you can type in your question at any time during the webinar. You don't have to wait to the end. Type in your question at any time. Uh, and then um, Maggie, when we get to the Q&A session, Maggie will go through those questions, answer as many of them, them as we have time for. If we don't get to your question during the webinar, we can um, also reach out after the webinar uh, and try to try to answer your question or make, make connections to people who can. So, uh, so please keep that in mind. Um, so we're really privileged to have several uh, members of the Coeur d'Alene tribe, tribal uh, research team for this project which, with us today. And, um, and so I'm going to turn it over, turn it over to uh, Cookie Allen, one of the leaders on that research team, to introduce the, research, re introduce the rest of her team today and um, get us started. So Cookie. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and hello and greetings to all who joined us to learn about our project. Uh, again, my name is Cookie Allen, and I serve as the PI for the Tribal Care Coordination Dashboard Project. I work with the tribe in North Idaho. See that map above that we were we showed you earlier because it's kind of hard to figure out where we are sometimes. And we're not in Boise; we're in the opposite side of end of the the state. Um, so I'll briefly introduce our presenters for the webinar today. Um, in first. Uh, presenter will also be joining me will be Marquette Hendricks, who now serves as the Strategic Initiatives Director with the Coeur d'Alene Tribe. She has played a vital role in this project, both as a data analyst and as, as well as dabbling in software development. And joining us also is Dr. Christina Ore from the University of Washington, who is Associate Director for the Seven Directions Program, that along with Dr. Myra Parker, 
Um, Christina Alotton with Dr. Myra Parker has provided much needed research and technical assistance. Uh, also presenting, we have um, Joey Bugner from the Coraline Tribes Mariman Health Center. She is the Wellbriety Services Manager and oversees the program centered for this project, the Youth Advocacy Services Pro Program that works with teens. And she also serves as a coordinator of the multidisciplinary team involved in this project, the Core Adolescent Support Team, or CAST as we refer to it. And finally, we have Rhea Jansen, who is the Strategic Initiatives and Development Data Analyst. Rhea has provided ex excellent technical and administrative support and expertise to our project. So um, next slide. As So as mentioned in our previous uh, webinar, um, our project goal has been to study how the Coeur d'Alene Tribe can create and implement an Indigenous Youth Care Coordination Dashboard that will um, aid our tribal leaders, our staff, and service providers in using real-time information to improve engagement and delivery of services aimed at tribal youth. The project has focused, has focused on researching and analyzing a universal application and referrals system and process for the multidisciplinary team mentioned that is serving this age group. Um, the team, uh, the core adolescent support team or CAST, consists of partners that are mentioned in this slide. We have Mariman Behavioral Health, Mariman Health Behavioral Health Division, the Youth Advocacy Services Program, the Tribes Education Department, the Boys and Girls Club, uh, and the University of Idaho Extension Program that also offers services to teens. And then we have ad hoc members on the team that are representatives of our lo local schools or sometimes from our law enforcement or law and order department. Um, we also included here a quick uh, visual of what the dashboard prototypes prototype presently looks like. Um, and again, giving, you know, trying to give that real time what's happening, how many are engaged, what are the ages, et cetera, what kind of services are they seeking? Um, and then also just quick fair warning. Um, in the slides ahead, we are going to cover a lot of technical aspects of our work. So um, this project has challenged our team to become more comfortable with and better understand software development in order to serve as the mediaries for the staff and the leaders who will use the dashboards, um, as well as working with our IT and software entities along the way to help create and identify what these dashboards will look like and the universal application and referral system options. Um, next slide. So quick background again for our project, our target population is those teens who have previously not been receiving wraparound services from um, our, our tribal child protection program due to limited resources. Um, the tribe has many programs aimed at preventative care, but um, for those teens showing risks of uh, at-risk behavior and risk factors in their lives, the tribe has recently developed a, a new program um, to fill that gap called the Youth Advocacy Services Program. Um, and then again, I just noticed on our slide that we have a lot of acronyms in here, so I apologize in advance, but the majority of those acronyms are the people that are involved that I mentioned earlier um, that are involved in this project. So anyway, uh, previous re research helped us realize that we as a tribe do not have a universal application and referral system or process, uh, nor software that offers multi-partner collaboration and case management. And this has made it difficult to intervene in a timely and more effective manner. Um, the research conducted through this dashboard project has helped um, our team um, analyze user experiences to maximize collaboration, services alignment, and client engagement. Um, so now I'll turn it over to Christina to discuss our project study aims. Thank you, Cookie. As we shared in the fall, this study follows the Coeur d'Alene Design Systems Alignment Framework that provides elements for a larger system strengthening uh, for health equity goals and aspirations for the CAST Tribal Coordination Dashboard Study. This is the pilot study designed to test and revise the referral and dashboard system with an eye for future research to study the impact of a tribal data system on increasing access and use of services by youth and attributes um, the measurable changes uh, in health and well being of youth um, back to the referral and dashboard. So these were original research questions that we had 
um, will the youth care coordination dashboard uh, intervention that's designed in the future improve access and use of uh, care services, and then also to look at the facilitators and barriers to its implementation um, across public health, behavioral health, social services, and other programs and services. Um, so with that in mind as a North Star, um, the next slide uh, describes the study aim. So the Coeur d'Alene team outlined three aims to pilot the referral and dashboard systems and prepare for a future intervention and impact study um, that were accomplished using an iterative and practice-based approach. So the three aims proposed were to map the tribal referral system, identify indicators for the dashboard, and engage tribal and non-tribal entities with similar referral systems to inform a comprehensive model. There were uh, These were accomplished in three phases. So the first was to complete and has been to complete a formative assessment that included literature review and meeting with other tribal native nations doing similar work. So we'll refer to that as the affinity group uh, to identify best practices, again, the facilitators and barriers to establishing a comprehensive model. Um, the second phase has involved piloting and revising the referral and dashboard system or pilot model. And this involved developing the universal intake form, interviews and observations. And then the third phase, uh, which we are in now is the completion of a development plan for expanding the referral system uh, that's inclusive of evaluation, process maps, and training. Um, I'll pass on over to Marquette to, to take you all through the activities um, that were done and accomplished uh, in this pilot study. Thank you, Christina. So this slide shows a list of the outputs and deliverables that we've been able to accomplish during this project. Um, you can see that they've been sorted into um, categories based on their impact, whether that's um, on an individual or a systemic level, and how they relate back to those original research questions that um, Christina just mentioned. The deliverables in the center have influence in both of those levels, and in the next few slides, I will go into more detail um, into a few of these deliverables. So the first two I want to highlight are the referral process diagram and the referrals training manual. The process diagram on the left shows the general process um, of a referral in our current system from start to finish. Um, so to kind of summarize, because it's a little bit busy, but basically a blank referral form is generated and filled out by the Wilbriety staff. That form, along with a blank confirmation form, is sent to the referral recipient. Um, and then the recipient then reviews the original referral that has all the client information, what they're being referred for, um, demographic information, and then they acknowledge that referral. And then that acknowledgement form is sent back to the Wilbriety staff, um, who then is able to close the referral once they have confirmation that the services have been rendered. And we also created a training manual for users um, of the referral system with a step-by-step -step guide for both the sender and the referrer, um, or referral recipient, sorry. Uh, this slide, we have some examples of the dashboards. Cookie had kind of gone over them a little bit earlier, but this is these are the dashboards that we felt were important um, to be contained, um, or to be contained on the dashboard. And they include data that is coming directly from the electronic referral form. And so these dashboards include demographic information about the youth being referred to the core adolescent support team. And from these, you can see that most of the referrals that are going to CAST are originating from the public school, followed by tribal social services. And we were also able to see that most youth being referred are 14-year-old Coeur d'Alene tribal females. We also have a map where we can see where on the reservation the youth live and all of this information and being able to see it in this format has really helped inform youth advocacy services and the CAST team um, in just how to best address the issues that our um, youth are facing. And after creating these dashboards and seeing how they can be used, our team now is looking at a more comprehensive software that can really accommodate our referrals and case management needs on a larger scale with the dashboards being a built-in feature. Um, and an automatic part of the workflow. So with that, we also um, 
created an evaluation tool and a SWOT analysis. So in addition to the dashboards, um, there were several other features that we knew would be critical for that tribe-wide data system to be most effective. In order to ensure the software programs we were reviewing met the criteria for what we were looking for, we developed a data system evaluation tool. And this is, was adapted from the National Network to End Domestic Violence, their database review chart. Um, and then this tool assessed multiple areas from overall functionality to cost. And data security and ownership was also very important to us. So we made sure that this tool included several areas to assess that. We ended up reviewing four different systems, including our current system. And we scheduled demos with all of them. We watched them with our teams. Um, we had an intern at one point who did a lot of research on the company's websites. And we were also able to speak with a few references that had used some of these programs. And from there, we were able to take that information from the evaluation tool and put it into a SWOT analysis. And this really allowed us to visually see each software's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and compare, compare them to each other as we moved closer to choosing the right product for us. Another thing that we worked on was a data sharing agreement for the CAS team. And so this slide shows a screenshot from the actual data sharing agreement. At the top, you can see um, in this chart, the main departments that are involved in CAS who will be sharing data on a regular basis. And that second row shows um, some of the data indicators that the group thought would be helpful. And these are agreed upon data indicators just to help the team monitor progress. And some of these indicators are already included in our dashboards, but not all of them. And so this is something that we definitely want to work towards is getting them all in some sort of dashboard so that we can continue to monitor them. And there have definitely been barriers and hiccups when it comes to getting this data sharing agreement in place. And it is something that we anticipated having completed much earlier in our project. It has definitely been a learning experience and a true testament to the consistent and deliberate work that goes into a collaboration like this. We really feel that CAST is a true example of what systems alignment looks like and this data sharing agreement that outlines these indicators and measures and the data that will be shared um, adds to the extra emphasis and accountability and in a way forces us to work together for lack of a better word. Another thing we worked on, we had, um, so last month our team attended the US Indigenous Data Sovereignty and Governance Summit in Tucson. And we had the opportunity to host a roundtable presentation um, as one of the sessions. And during the roundtable session, we, pre we presented on this work that we've been doing through this project, primarily data collection and the use of dashboards, as well as the start of the tribal data affinity group um, that Christina had mentioned. The discussions that stemmed from the roundtable, um, it was a lot better than I think we had even hoped for. The session was really well attended and the conversation was really organic and engaging. And for us, this really showed just how eager tribes are to have conversations around data and data sovereignty. Um, we got several contacts from individuals who are interested in joining the tribal data affinity group to continue having those discussions. Um, some of the topics that were discussed um, included, you know, how do we obtain leadership and community buy-in? Um, and then something that we hadn't really thought about before was a, there was a discussion about partnering with Indigenous libraries to house our data and research and any deliverables that come out of our research, such as curriculum or other things like that. And then um, there was even a discussion about partnering directly with Microsoft or another big software company to build custom software that could then be, you know, shared with other tribes. And leadership participation has been um, another outcome of this project. So in terms of deliverables and outcomes, it was, has really helped get that leadership buy-in and, and gain that momentum for data governance and sovereignty. Um, not only through consistent meetings with our tribal collaboration committee, 
but our tribal council members have become more interested in data and data governance over the years since we've started talking about this. Um, the day before the summit that I just mentioned, um, there was a leadership workshop that our tribal council chairman and our um, administrative director attended. And this was an opportunity for tribal leadership from across the country, even you know as far as New Zealand, um, to work together and identify indigenous data governance standards. And so that is it for me right now. I will turn it over to Joey to talk about um, the impact this project has had on direct services that she's involved in. Thank you, Marquette. Hello, everybody. Again, my name is Joey Buckner, and I'm the Well Variety Services Manager and a member of the Cord Lane Tribe. Uh, today, I want to highlight the impact the project has had on the Well Variety Program and the services we offer our community. The main areas that we have seen an improvement in are data collection, visit, visibility, and usage. This project has helped us look at data differently and improve our data collection and show we use it in our program. For instance, the data from the electronic referral is being stored in Airtable. <clears throat> we really like the program because it is very user-friendly and has the ability to create dashboards, it does our reports, and it's fillable online forms for us also. This led Will Bridey converting all of our Excel spreadsheets. So when I first came into the program, I think we had like six spreadsheets. So I was trying to streamline that. And when I did, we... I was led on to Airtable, so we were able to utilize that. But it was being used to be able to greatly improve our program and overall the data collection and the reporting capability. We've also, I've also seen an improvement in our staff accountability. Uh, the image on the slide shows an example of how I am able to see how many um, my recoveries coach have in each case. I know if they're cast, if they're YAS, their age, their gender, gender, tribal, what community do they live in? Are they receiving services? What contact or phase are they in in our program? And then what um, victimization? Um, another part that we use is our case management is also become easier because we do the assessment for each client and track types of victimization we are better able to identify who needs referrals to mental health and or substance use disorder, counseling or other types of services. While this project has helped our department with data collection and, and improve our services for our youth, we still need, we still have a few things we need to continue to work on. One is better tracking of individual outcomes when youth is referred to CAST. Our hope is with more time, we'll be able to show how a referral to CAS can improve overall health and academic outcomes for high-risk youth. Uh, we also have hope for consolidation software systems, so referrals in case management can be more co cohesive and streamlined throughout the tribal departments. Um, finally, our current referral system is working for internal referrals, but we hope that with enhanced software capabilities, we will have the ability to send and track referrals, external services to providers. And I will hand it over to Rhea. Thank you, Joey. Uh, I'm Rhea Jansen, and I will discuss the demographics of our end user interviews for this project. The users we interviewed were community members, as seen by the 60% of interviewees being enrolled Coeur d'Alene tribal members, really emphasizing the close community con connection amongst stakeholders in this project. The majority of those not enrolled of the interviewees had also been working within the tribe for multiple years at the time, so they still had a deep community connection as well. We were able to get a variety of stakeholders who interact with the referral system and or the CAS program in different capacities, ranging from Indian Child Welfare Program, Career Renewal, Department of Education, voc Vocational Rehab, Technical Ed Programs, Information Technology, strategic initiatives and development, and of course, our well variety care team. This variety of positions enlighten us to unique viewpoints and considerations when improving and inter interacting with the referral system. Throughout these programs, the majority of our respondents, about 80% fell 
into the age range of 40 to 59 years old, though in our ed second and final end user interviews, 75% fell into the 20 to 39 year old age group, and that was with our well variety care team fully. Uh, a large majority, nine of our respondents were female, largely because these office workforces are mostly comprised of women. And we were lucky to get users with a wide range of duration working with the tribe. But as you can see by the graph on this slide, you can see that the duration majority of the respondents have been working with the tribe for more than 20, like 20 plus years, showing the deep ties workers have to the Coeur d'Alene community and the dedication that these workers and stakeholders have to bettering the community as a whole. Uh, and now I will turn it back over to Christina to further discuss our findings from these end user interviews. Thank you, Rhea. There's definitely a thread of relationality and connection to community that goes through not only the, um, the feedback on the referral system, but the findings that we're starting to um, uh, in, are, are in the process of confirming and drafting implications to share with the TCC and leadership before finalizing. Um, these findings uh, will inform the development plan and future studies. The entire team received city certification and participated in the qualitative analysis of the interviews connected in October and April. We're sharing selected findings in response to our original research questions within the cross-sector cross alignment framework uh, mentioned in the previous uh, talk that we gave in November. In response to facilitators and barriers within the comprehensive referral dashboard system uh, from the user experience. <clears throat> Facilitators for the process and success of the referral system include being a community member, as mentioned before, and having longtime connections within the tribe. Uh, with this consideration, uh, the term user isn't such a good fit as it implies a disconnection, and that can be adjusted in the future, but informs um, future uh, mapping of uh, studies and how we um, talk about uh, the referral and dashboard system and process. Um, the response we received on comfort level with using the referral system, experience of communication and collaboration contributes to a strong sense of trust and shared purpose, uh, important indicators uh, for long-term collaboration for health equity. Uh, the users expressed, um, and, and I kind of put that in quotes now, uh, when we think about community members um, intimately connected uh, with the health and well-being of, uh, of the community, um, expressed initial concern that the intake forms were too long and burdensome for community members in initial interviews. And this has been addressed uh, through internal meetings and discussions. And in the final interviews, we see that this intake burden has been reduced. A challenge that continued uh, from the beginning to the end is closing the referral uh, by service providers rather than the initial originator. And this is an area that's expected to be addressed in the in future iterations. And it's also an important component of the new system. Uh, the provider case manager shared it would be good to have the person completing the referral close the case. Another important component of the revised referral uh, system will continue to be security, ensuring that only programs with access see data presented on a client patient community member. These findings serve to improve uh, the referral dashboard system by highlighting important points in the process to improve and collect data securely. Um, the next slide uh, is the second North Star question for, for Coeur uh, the Coeur d'Alene team um, as it steers the team towards preparation for the future intervention or quasi-experimental study that may come uh, soon. The North Star being design, uh, the design of an intervention that uses the referral dashboard system to measure changes in health and, and out, uh, well-being outcomes of youth. Uh, the findings suggest uh, the existing comprehensive model has components that center community data sovereignty and governance, technology, team learning, and have shown impact in lowering the number of at-risk youth coming through the youth advocacy services and CAS team review. An important finding from the interviews is the fact that there is a synergy between the re referral dashboard system and the CAS system, the CAS team um, that re reviews each case to recommend programs and services for youth. This is tailored individualized attention alongside a strengthening tribal data system and has the potential for long-term impact uh, when expanded outside social services in the court system. 
with that, I'll pass over to Cookie to discuss what we're working on uh, going forward. Thank you. Thanks, Christina. Um, yeah, so as, as mentioned, the work is not over. Um, it's probably never over as you all who work in this, these areas can attest to. Uh, but our official project timeframe for this project has ended. And so now we're in the end stages of writing up our findings and into a report that we uh, hope to share in the weeks and months ahead with um, not only back to report back to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Systems for Alignment, but also um, to further our recommendations to our tribal council and tribal collaboration committee for final approval on and uh, for a final approval or decision making on an intake slash referrals and case management system, um, we've we've looked at ver various systems and we feel confident that we've identified a few that will be a great fit for us. Um, we will also be seeking out resources to secure the system and provide training for staff and client use um, and for our leadership and. Um, well, one thing what we know is that we've attempted attempted forms of software rollout in the past uh, years that we've been, you know, aiming to improve um, the the communication and collaboration in this area. And we have had some ups and downs, and what we we've, we've definitely been down that path. So we know that this is not going to may not go as smooth as we uh, hope it will, but. Um, with all this research that we've done this past year, we feel we're feeling pretty confident about that. Um, and we um, will be uh, at rolling it out with the specific programs and departments that have been working on this wraparound care work with um, youth as well as other um, high risk clients in our community. But it is the hope of our tribal council that this system will just become organization wide so that any in edit, there will be easier interaction and interfacing uh, for services with the tribe across all of our um, sectors. So we hope to get that um, rolled out organization wide in the in the year ahead. Um, and we will be monitoring and evaluating the impact and the effectiveness of that system. So we hope to continue to do research to talk to document this. Um, experience because we know that other tribes and other rural communities and just other entities in general um, would benefit from that. So we're hopeful for that. Um, and most importantly, we um, just continue to, we hope to continue to, um, like I said, document and do more research on this so that we can um, build that knowledge of information that's sorely needed, especially in tribal communities. So thank you again for for um, listening to our project and I'll turn it over to Marquette. Thank you, Cookie. Um, so that includes our presentation today. We finished up a few minutes early, but we really did wanna thank everybody for joining us today. And we wanna give a special thank you to the team at Systems for Action, Dr. Mays and Maggie, thank you for being here with us today. And also a special shout out to our um, team at Systems for Action, uh, Carrington and Sedina, they patiently walked alongside us and offered us tons of their guidance and wisdom over the course of this past year. So we are very grateful for that. Um, and now I'll turn it over to Maggie who will help us with the Q&A uh, portion. Great, thank you so much. Um, that was very interesting and enlightening. Uh, we. Please feel free, everyone, uh, all of the participants, to type in your questions to the Q&A, um, and then we will answer them here. Uh, right now, we have uh, one question up so far, um, and that is, can you share your experience recommendations on how youth, um, youth slash recipients slash community members can be directly involved in planning, collection, dashboard development, and leveraging of data. Not sure who, uh, who wants to take a stab at that. <laughs> I'll, I will try to start 
answering that question. And that's a really, that's a deep question. But what, what we're hoping is that the, that the software that we end up using will have that, uh, that ability for, um, to create a portal to establish an individual account for some of the, for these clients where I, I'm sure a lot of you guys maybe are, have become familiar with it when you go to your dental office or to get medical services, it would be very, it would be hopefully be similar to that. Um, because one of our biggest things is, is having like that reciprocal relationship with the clients and w w us wanting to make sure that they have that direct um, ability to provide input, to update their information, to ask questions. So um, I'm hopeful that that will be a part of a big part of this system. I'll also say that um, kind of our oversight committee, um, who's really helped us with this project and with a lot of our strategic planning, um, including with this referral system and um, the data collection, um, is our tribal collaboration committee. And that committee, um, I think we talked more about it in our previous um, presentation, but it, it does include um, managers, directors, CEOs from our tribal um, justice system departments, um, our health system, our health center, Department of Education. And, and most of the people on that committee are community members and tribal members. And so I think when we talk about including them in um, like directly involving in that planning, the planning really stemmed from that committee. And so they are community members, they are tribal members, they have family members here. Um, they have family members who are being served and being referred through, you know, to the cast team even. So I think when we talk about, you know, in that involvement and having community members involved from, you know, the ground up, we definitely had that. Um, and so I will just say that that committee has really served um, a critical um, part in the development of this project and including them every step of the way. All right, thank you. Um, I want to just touch on really quickly a, a, another question was asked about uh, if people are interested in getting involved in the tribal affinity group. Um, maybe they could reach out to one of you or or if you, you know, want to mention the, be the best person or group of people to get in touch with. I just offered my email I'm as a point <clears throat> person. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Marquette, if you wanted to add anything, but I know uh, we had this question in the last um, webinar as well. So I'm happy to receive. Yeah, I think any of us. Mm -hmm. um, all right, our next question, uh, you mentioned wanting to manage outside referrals. What are the primary systems or partners um, do you wish you could bring into this? Um, Joey might have more information, but we, so we're right now we're focused on you know, internal meaning like within the tribe. Um, but it's still a very small community, very, very rural community. We have a lot of services compared to other rural communities, but we also have, you know, neighboring cities like Spokane, Washington and Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, who have many, many more services available. Um, and so we would like to partner with um, some of those organizations um, for youth or for, you know, the families to get help, you know, help families get back on their feet. Um, but Joey, I don't know if you have any um, specific services that you're hoping to be able to refer to. So when we, so like there's a heart to heart in Fort Lane and it's a, like a faith based men's style home. And so I think it's just being able to collaborate with more of those resources to be able to help our people get back on their feet and life skills and everything else. Um, so I think it's just being able to partnership with those. Uh, can you please elaborate a little on how you've used Airtable and what sort of impact this platform has had on your staff and workflow? 
I'll take, oh, you want me to take it, Marquette, or do you want it? I was just going to start with the very basic that our referral system is in Air Slate, and the information from that electronic referral is then exported to Airtable. So Airtable is like the database. So I was just going to give that uh, piece of information, but go ahead, Joey. I can talk about, about Airtable. So it, it helps in being able to show our staff like what phases our recoveries are on, um, why are they still in first contact? So like we move our recoveries through phases and we have timelines for them. Um, and so with that and being able to use Airtable, um, it helps us when we're staffing that we're able to say, you know, and uh, talk about our recoveries. Why are they still in first contact? What's the, you know, barriers and things like that. So it just be, it's able to just help everybody be accountable, but it's actually for us to all pull together as a team to be able to help our recoveries. I will say I too, when, um, when you're going from uh, Excel spreadsheets to uh, you know a database like Airtable, um, I know we've had problems with, you know, people make a copy of the Excel and then they put it on their desktop and they're updating that one or, or someone, you know, saved it in a different spot. And so, or it locks you out if somebody else is in the Excel spreadsheet. So Airtable helps a little bit more with, you know, having multiple people view and enter data. And then you can also create fillable forms as data input. So um, and you can send the form to somebody so they never even have to go into the database. They can just put their data directly into a form. And so it helps with some of that like user error or something accidentally getting deleted, but also multiple people can be working in the same error table at the same time. And so it just helps with the collaboration a little bit more than say an Excel spreadsheet. Great, thanks. Um, Marquette, you all right, our next question, uh, approximately how long did it take for your organization to get from inception to this point? Um, I'll, I'll start with that one too. So, you know, we can go back as far as 2014 when this team that we've been talking about, the travel collaboration team came together and uh, we basically did a like a brainstorming or a live in person, you know, SWOT analysis or what are the biggest issues that that we're facing in serving these people, especially these the youth. And um, through that, we quickly realized that we ha were having that hard time communicating um, in it effectively and seeing things through, seeing referrals through our system. There was no system to be found, so we were doing referrals via email or phone call. And so there was no accountability along the way, along in the process. And, you know, did you respond to that person? Did that kid get served? Um, and oftentimes the families of the ch of the kids that weren't being served would then go to our tribal council, to our leader's offices and say, hey, my kid has, has been trying, you know, has been facing these issues or whatever. And so then tribal council comes back and and kind of puts us in the spot. So in that conversation, we we realized that this was an important thing that was needed. However, I can't, we underestimated it because we, we you know referral systems are used everywhere, and we thought there would be something out there that was ready to use. Um, or uh, and so we tried that, and that's what I was talking about earlier when we rolled out certain. Um, software in the past and it turned out to not be what we needed at all and had a lot of um, issues with confidentiality. Um, so then we thought, okay, well, we can create something from scratch. And so that really came about um, through uh, preparing for this uh, grant application and um, through this process to uh, seeing what our previous, some other service providers on the reservation, specifically Mariman Health, were using AirSlate and um, then subsequently Air Airtable. So that help that makes it, it's a very user-friendly software for us to build and kind of um, do it, customize it to what we felt we needed. But even that, and I'll turn it over to Marquette, even that has turned out to be super cumbersome on AirSlate and Airtable. And so we knew we needed to look at other options. 
Yeah, I, I there's not a lot of us who are managing the you know technical assistance training um, of the staff and just you know if something breaks you know it's having to get back in there and um, you know and see what's broken and kind of and troubleshoot. So it's been challenging just not having you know a dedicated person who's really focused on this um, and also the I mean it's built with you know fairly, you know, software that's just available. There's free versions of it, you know, the, but the capability, the, you know, it's not as comprehensive as what we really want. And to even try to get it to where, you know, it would meet and check all of our boxes would be really time consuming. And um, so we know there are better systems out there, um, but this was a good, a good experience to get us, you know, to really make us think about what those fun what that functionality would look like um and also just to help us have something in the meantime so all right um so the next question and i might add a little bit to this one actually uh so what is the approach to consent management in terms of a client's name etc is it kept private or is there a consent to release it um, in the referral cycle um, and I might just add to this uh, sort of a tag on question about, you know, data privacy um, and if that's, you know, how you, your organization is kind of considered or, or implemented that. Um, <clears throat> I think I caught the last, your, your volume is really quiet, oh, I'm but, so sorry. but I think I caught most of the end of that question. Um, and so we do have the data sharing agreement that you know, specifically says that we can share those names and um, with the, re you know, in the referral forms. And we also have a tribal resolution that speaks to the multidisciplinary team and what we can and can't share through that team. So, um, but in the actual referral forms, um, we are sending, so it doesn't send, the email doesn't contain any names or anything like that. So when you click a button, you can go directly to that referral and it, it so it brings you to the referral. And so there's a little bit more um, security there. And the all the clients sign when they sign up for the program. So once once the team at Youth Advocacy Services gets the referral, they can meet with the client and they sign, you know, releases as part of their intake packet. Um, so that they can work with other referral providers for that care coordination. And sorry, I will try and speak up. Uh, all right, so does your process mapping and planning include referrals for family members or caregivers to services and resources? So this is the first um, kind of pilot and it's, you know, specifically for the youth as far as like the actual referral system, the air slate air table system, but referrals are happening. So, um, and because youth Ad advocacy services is under the Wellbriety umbrella, um, Wellbriety serves as Joey was mentioning like the recovery community. So there's a reentry program under Wellbriety as well as the youth advocacy services and Wellbriety itself is under Marie Health, which is our main, our tribally owned community health center. So there's medical, dental, community health, behavioral health, um, SUD services, medication assisted treatment for opioid use disorder. So it's um, very integrated in that way. So that if, you know, once somebody comes into the program, they do that whole needs assessment on you know, oh, you haven't had a dental checkup in five years, let's get you scheduled. And so there's a lot of referrals happening. Um, but at this point, it's just not happening through this particular software that we've built. Um, but they are looking at the family component as well in the cast team, just from experience and being a part of the cast team. We definitely have youth that, you know, that we staff that we know exactly what's happening with the parents. Maybe they're involved in law, you know, law enforcement, or they're um, also going through the Wellbriety program, and so it kind of helps to um, know what's going on in the community. And like I said, it's a small community. Um, we 
we see areas of need and especially, you know, it is it a lot of times, unfortunately, it is concentrated to families or passed down that generationally some of those hardships and trauma. So we try to keep that in mind. All right, the next question is uh, for the designation of tribal affiliation, was this limited to federal, federally registered tribal membership or do you have challenges um, with a more general tribal identity variable? We kept it pretty simple because we are a tr tribe, tribe and this, the services are on the reservation. We, um, we, there's a handful like of local tribes that we included, but then there's also just the option for other, if you know, there's another tribe or um, the department also serves non-tribal members as well, so. Yeah, I would say the this the straight up answer is that we the CAF team will serve anybody in well variety will serve any youth in need. Um, we if needed, we would do the preference obviously for the tribal youth and enrolled youth, but we have enough um, resources and and our aim is to serve all youth on the reservation. Um, all right, next question. As you identified indicators for the dashboard, I'm interested in whether there were considerations unique to the tribal context that um, that impacted what indicators you chose or the process for selecting indicators. I think we're hoping to continue to build those. Um, right now, they're mostly demographic. Um, but you know, tribal affiliation is definitely one of them. We want to know is there, you know, a disproportionate amount of, you know, Coeur d'Alene tribal members who are needing a certain type of service or who are being referred for. Um, we have the reason for referral that's included. So, if the school is referring, a lot of times, it'll be attendance related. Um, so we've had conversations about, you know how can we hire a tribal resource officer who could then work directly with the schools? Um, and so it kind of just stems from there. We are really looking at where the highest need is. Um, and, but I can't, I won't, I'm not certain if there's, um, we're still at the very early, early stages. And so we, we definitely want to build out our dashboards um, to what's gonna be you know, most beneficial to not only the programs, but, um, you know, we talked about like tribal leadership. And so that might be something unique is just what um, dashboards to tribal leadership have access to that's going to help them um, know how the programs are doing. Um. All right, uh, this is maybe a more technical question. How does the air table then translate to a dashboard? Yeah, I can answer that. So um, there, so we currently have the data that is in Airtable. This is a very piecemeal system at this point, but it, the data goes from Airslate to Airtable, from Airtable it goes to a Google Doc, and then from there it goes to Looker Studio. Um, but what we're finding is Airtable has um, dashboards that are very comparable to what we have in Looker Studio. So we're looking at just keeping it all within Airtable at this point, because we kind of have air dashboards in Airtable, but then we also have them on the Looker Studio portion. So if most of them can be done in Airtable, we're going to try and just move them over. So we're kind of in the process of doing that right now. Um. This question is, does your EHR, so electronic health record, have a referrals module? And my understanding of EHRs is that they're kind of limited to a, a health services context. And so they may not be used in a, you know, social services, schools, other things, but maybe you wanna elaborate on if that was something that you considered or, or something. Yeah. Um, so before coming and working with the strategic initiatives, um, and development department. I worked at Mariman Health for 14 years and worked very closely with the EHR and um, the templates and 
things like that. So, um, but the EHR is solely used by our Marine and Health Center. So, um, social, like you mentioned, social services, the courts, um, they don't have access to the EHR. And so we wanted something that would be, um, that could integrate perhaps with our EHR so that we can send and receive referrals from Marine Health. But when we're talking about like the tribal departments, um, because they don't have access to the EHR, we needed something that could help facilitate those referrals. All right, uh, we've got two questions left and I'm wondering if we can get through them both in three minutes. Uh, if not, <laughs> we'll just see. All right, so how was your experience building this collaboration across agencies and service providers despite potential competition between service providers for funding? That's a good question. Honestly, um, by having this collaboration work group that meets month almost monthly we have the the aim was to form relationships or to improve, improve on our relationships because the truth of the matter was that we were working in silos and we probably I don't know that we were competing for funding um, but we certainly weren't aligned in our approach so coming together through that collaborative committee um, we've actually out, outlined a strategic plan with actions that we are dedicated to working together on. So through that process, we've actually been able to, you know, even our office, the Strategic Initiatives Office helps, have helped each of these entity, these partners uh, apply for and get grants to establish some of this programming. So if anything, we've been, we haven't had to compete against each other as much as we've learned to coordinate and collaborate. Um, but maybe maybe some of the team might have more to add on that. Right. Um, well, so we have one more question, and then there's, I think, a couple slides I need to get to. Um, so maybe we can do this other question, either virtually or a, a quick, a quick response. I can answer it quickly. <laughs> okay. So the. The question is, what are the, the pros and cons of a youth-facing interface where they can initiate a referral from a web page or an app? That is something that we have been reviewing with these other software systems is having a, um, like a portal almost so that people can do their own referrals and sign up for different programs. Um, I don't know if there, I can really speak to the pros and cons at this point, but that's something that we're looking at. Great. Um, well, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, so uh, any of the attendees, if you'd like to receive a certificate of completion um, for today's webinar, please complete the survey at the end of the session and one will be emailed to you. And next slide, please. Um, and then our next uh, research progress webinar um, it will be achieving reach in youth behavioral health and wellness through Catchment Area Community Governance, and that is scheduled for Wednesday, May 22nd um, at this same time, 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and you can register for that online. Um, and you, may, you likely are already receiving emails from me. So, so. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much for joining. This was a wonderful presentation and really great work. And um, I hope that you all can continue doing all of this and building on, you know, this really important resource and um, navigator for your tribal community. Um, good luck. Thank you. Thank you.